Cancer is a genetic disease that develops when cells in our body get mutations in specific genes. These mutations allow cells to grow uncontrollably, leading to the formation of tumours. Each person's tumour has unique properties with different genetic mutations. From looking inside tumours, we can see that they are not merely balls of cancer cells. Tumour cells are surrounded by immune cells and cells called fibroblasts, which support and hold different cells together by making so-called connective tissue. These and many other components make up the tumour landscape or microenvironment and can change how tumours grow or respond to therapies. To increase the number of people who survive cancer, we need better therapies and ways of selecting the right treatment for a person's tumour. Here at the Cancer Research UK Manchester Institute, we have teams of scientists exploring cancer landscapes in order to expose potential weaknesses. Dr Klaus Jürgensen and his team are exploring how cancer cells communicate with non-cancer cells. In my lab, we're interested in understanding how tumour cells interact with a host. And some of the cells in the microenvironment of these tumours are fibroblasts. And the tumour cells make these fibroblasts do things they normally wouldn't do. And this can lead to tumour progression, but it can also lead to therapeutic resistance. One of the things we've found out more recently is that these fibroblasts that are co-opted by the tumour cells engages additional signaling pathways in the tumour cells and we hope to leverage this for additional therapeutic approaches in the future. Tumours also contain many different immune cells. Some immune cells attack cancer cells. However, others actually help tumours to grow and switch off the anti-cancer immune response. Dr Santiago Zelenay and his team are uncovering how cancer cells interact with the immune system. Cancer cells very often produce and release into the surrounding an inflammatory lipid known as prostaglandin E2. In my group, we found that this inflammatory lipid addresses the function of all those type of immune cells that are typically found infiltrating tumors. However, by specifically acting on natural killer cells, this lipid helps those tumor cells to grow more aggressively. We think that by detecting the activity of this lipid within cancer patient samples, we can better predict which patients might benefit from those cancer treatments that exploit our immune system, the so-called immunotherapies. We also found that anti-inflammatory drugs that are commonly used to treat conditions such as arthritis can help and boost the response of those immunotherapies. Environmental factors can change the landscape of tumours. For example, UV light from the sun is the main cause of skin cancer. Dr. Amaya Viros is a dermatologist who works directly with patients and runs her own team of researchers studying how ageing can affect the tumour landscape. In my lab we're looking at additional factors within the tumour microenvironment that impact how the tumour behaves. We are looking at components that are not cell-based, so we're looking at the connective tissue that binds all the cells together. And this connective tissue serves as a scaffold function, and as we age, multiple changes occur. Primarily the scaffold function decreases, affecting how cancer progresses in the elderly population. In order to develop better cancer therapies, our scientists use cutting-edge technologies to unravel the complex interactions between all cell types within tumours. Join us in exploring the cancer landscape by taking part in our virtual experience.